fun. Good evening. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, <clears throat> hearing. My name is uh, Jeff Mullen. I'm the acting chair of the Board of Appeals. With me are uh, Mr. Frank O'Brien and Ms. Giselle Jaw from members of the board and sitting on the panel with respect to the comprehensive hearing, comprehensive permit application for 582 Blue Hill Avenue. Today is uh, April 7, and this is our 13th session. Uh, as is our custom, or my custom at least, um, let me, let me I'll get some preliminary items I'd like to address at the top. <clears throat> um, the first issue is uh, at the end of the last hearing, or towards the end of the last hearing, there was a there was an, a mention of, <clears throat> uh, I believe, quote, uh, unwanted elements, and that this application would bring unwanted elements to the town of Milton. At the <clears throat> at the uh, at the close of the person who raised those hearings comments, I made a remark that this hearing wasn't about discussing unwanted elements. It was about discussing many things, including massing and design and traffic and drainage and all of the things about which we've spoken. And Mr. Zawinski, uh, town planner, also made some similar, similar comments and touched on his own personal experience. I wanna remind people, and I wanna make a statement at the top about how inappropriate a comment like that is. <clears throat> this time, I'm gonna remind everybody that this hearing is about balancing local concerns against the regional need for affordable housing that the legislature has embodied into the Massachusetts general laws. That's what this is about. Um, and in the 12 previous meetings that we've had, I've heard a lot of testimony from town officials and from neighbors, from concerned citizens, from experts, from the applicant about <clears throat> those local concerns. We've heard nothing until the other night about any quote unquote unwanted elements. Um, it's inappropriate, it's wrong, and it won't be tolerated. So um, I wanna get back to the good work that everybody here has been doing in good faith, but I did not want, and I don't think the board wanted to let, those, let that remark go uh, unrecognized in a formal way, and I'm doing that now. Um, I'm also not going to open that comment up to debate. I will, however, ask my board members <clears throat> whether or not they believe it to be appropriate that we formally vote to strike the, the comment from the record so that it can be reflected in the minutes and in the, in the official proceedings, in the official record of this proceeding. And to the extent that the board is interested in doing that, I'd entertain a motion to that effect. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, I would like to make that motion. Um, and in doing so, I'd like to point out that I've been on this Board of Appeals since 1998. And this is the first time that I have felt the need in any hearing that I have sat on, and I've sat on a lot to make such a motion. So with that, I'd make that motion to strike those remarks. Is there a, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Is there a second? Mr. Chair, I, I second the motion. And I will also add that while I don't think any of us can speak to anyone's intent, the comment that uh, was made seemed to be discriminatory in nature. Um, whether that was the intent or not, that's certainly how it rang to my ears and I think to others too. And so for it's it's appropriate to strike it from the record on that basis, because we will not sort of consider anything that's discriminatory in nature. And as you pointed out, it's irrelevant to the standard that we'll be upholding. Thank you. Yeah, it's so duly noted. Uh, thank you for that point. Uh, all right, so all in favor of, of, of striking the, the reference from the record, uh, please say aye. Aye. Okay. okay, I as well. Ms. Jaffa, did you vote? I didn't hear you. I did. Okay. Aye. Okay. So the, the, rec the, the reference is stricken from the record. <clears throat> We're going to move the, uh, and thank you very much, uh, 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 for everybody. Um, let me move to some other housekeeping. Uh, it, it, as I like to do, or, or I have done in the past, I just receive, let people know what we received this week. We received an email from Natalie Howard, uh, uh, who I think people know 
from previous uh, hearings, uh, 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 Stefan, I, I believe uh, Stefan is her husband, um, regarding the site walk and several observations <clears throat> she made and wanted to reiterate, uh, particularly the request for the escrow that was made uh, on the on the hill. <clears throat> so um, that's been entered into the record. We also received an email from Amy McGrath, uh, who lives over on Robbins, about the uh, the easement, the, the particular reference to the easement that runs from the or that <clears throat> is is shown on a plan uh, recorded in the Norfolk Registry, um, <clears throat> referencing an easement, requesting for more details about uh, the scope of the easement, book and page, etc. So. That's been entered into the record, and uh, I direct to Mr. Schumer to that. That's a, a question we would like to formally ask that you follow up on. As Ms. McGrath, just to, to belabor the point, <laughs> uh, not not uh, uh, not unnecessarily because I, I want to make this point. Um, she noted that you did submit the the, the plan from Norfolk with, that I think went over went went on with the Hillsview subdivision in 1968 which incidentally shows a lot of these water drainage systems and is quite handy with respect to the site walk that we took. So I, I did spend a little time studying it, but it didn't have the nature of the easement. And as we all know, the easement cannot by itself be, 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 um, uh, be created via a plan. So <clears throat> it would be helpful to get some more information on that. Thirdly, we had a couple of hours in, in the site on the site and did a site walk. And I, I'm just going to list while that's not part of the hearing, I do want to list uh, for the record the questions that I heard were raised. This may not be exhaustive. I know Mr. Schoma was taking good notes. Others were as well. Um, the, according to my, my own recollection, uh, there was a request for an escrow account to be set up. There were comments about lighting and light spillage on the north elevation uh, at, toward the end of the hearing that I noted. Uh, there was a request for what I'll call a hard connection to the town's drainage system, rather than what I believe is being proposed in the most recent iteration, that is at the uh, extreme, I guess it would be the southerly uh, limit of the property as it enters onto Meeting House. There was a request for a connection of, of, the, of the drainage to one, uh, to sewerage, I'm sorry, to 138 instead of to Meeting House Lane. There were Comments on capacity of the line, Mr. Burke had explained that the engineering uh, illustrates a, a lot of capacity in that line that can be handled by the, the, uh, the introduction of the units. Um, but there's question about the capacity and how the line actually works. I think that was expressed mainly in connection with where the line terminates or where the line intersects with Alfred Road, Alfred Road and the now uh, familiar situation that Mr. Gallagher and the Gallagher family are in. So there's some questions about the capacity of the line. Um, and then lastly, <clears throat> there were a lot of questions about how that last manhole on, on Meeting House works with respect to its intersection with Alfred and uh, its um, con connection or relationship to the MWRA mainline that comes through there uh, as it uh, works with the, with the brook. That's at least how I understood it. So that's what I took away from the site walk. I appreciate the time that people spent out there uh, taking a look. And I, I thought it was quite informative and appreciate the, the applicant and the expert's time. Um, we also received uh, <clears throat> a, a message this afternoon from Mr. Schomer uh, that I, I'd like him to address so that we can consider it in open session. I've not spoken to the members about it, but I appreciate the note. Tonight we were we were planning. Well, let, let me back up. Last week we were we were planning to discuss drainage traffic, and then we had promised the neighbors an extended question and answering period. So we didn't get through. We got through the traffic, and we got we we took care of the extended Q and A with respect to traffic, and we just didn't have time to uh, hear from Mr. Burke. Although we we did. We did become better educated about Mr. Burke's design and the site walk, so we appreciate that. Mr. Schumer has now informed us that Mr. Burke and the town's uh, peer reviewer, the board's peer reviewer, have had a conversation, and that may impact the testimony tonight. Since tonight, what I had expected to hear was from Mr. Burke about the drainage, it's a question and answering, and I'd like Mr. Schumer, for the record, to go through the waivers that he's requested. 
Um, I'm not sure the waiver conversation lends itself to a lot of Q&A, but I think for the record, I think it's helpful for you to go through that and what the applicant's intent is. So with that, I, <clears throat> that's all I have for preliminary comments and just to let people know where it is that we are. I, I'll invite members of the board if they've got anything they'd like to add or supplement to my pre preliminary remarks. Otherwise, we'll turn it over to Mr. Schumer. Nothing here, Mr. Chairman. Nothing from me, thank you. Okay, Mr. Schumer, welcome to the board. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and members sure. of the board. Uh, thank you for allowing us to address these issues tonight. Uh, the, the correspondence that I sent to uh, the town planner and Ms. Barrett and to yourself, Mr. Mullen, had to do with a, a very recent conversation between our engineer and the board's peer reviewer from uh, Tetra Tech. And these kind of conversations are, are pretty common as this process moves along because we're, the, the engineers are trying to work out issues between themselves in terms of their, their approach to the design for these kind of technical systems. And so um, I'll, I'll let Mr. Burke speak um, in, in greater detail about it, but um, in a nutshell, um, Mr. Reardon from Tetra Tech has a number of additional recommendations for some design, a different approach to some aspects of the stormwater design. And those include um, such, such things as incorporating some low, low impact development elements into this system. Um, and um, and as, as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, making a hard connection to the, to the town's stormwater infrastructure at Meeting House Lane. And so my understanding is that the conversation today was very productive and that we are working with Mr. Reardon and we're, we're gonna do our best to incorporate his recommendations into, into the design um, and the reason why I reached out to, the, to, to Tim and Judy about this uh, was because these changes would, would make uh, some fairly significant changes to the overall design of the system. Uh, although both systems work, it's, it's a different approach to, to, to stormwater management. And, and uh, Sean had, a, had thoughts about how it, it might be improved. Um, and we're willing to do those changes. So um, the reason for the... For the the message was to perhaps suggest that um, if we go into an extensive discussion of the system as it's shown on paper today, um, that might um, that might not be as productive as perhaps waiting a week after the engineers have had an opportunity to discuss the issues and and hopefully reach some agreement about a, a final design that they're both comfortable with. Jim, uh, do you have anything to add to that? Um. Good evening, uh, James Burke, uh, registered civil engineer with, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with the cell Burke Sala. For the record, um, uh, I reached out to Mr. Reardon um, in anticipation of tonight's meeting uh, to see if he, if he had any uh, major concerns with the, the design as it, uh, as it stands today. Um, he basically said that it's, it's miles ahead of where we started and, and the original design, but he still had concerns with the, uh, the size of the detention structures adjacent to the building and felt that we weren't utilizing the property uh, sufficiently enough with LID techniques, uh, with uh, other infiltration uh, methods, uh, in, in perhaps, uh, uh, you know, other locations for uh, retention and detention. He felt that the, the, the site wasn't being utilized properly enough and he's asked us to take a look at that. Um, I feel the site, uh, the design is presented tonight. Uh, I think it works. I think you can probably tweak it here and there, but in the end, he said he couldn't give a positive recommendation for this particular design because he had uh, a, uh, low expectation of uh, the long-term success of the underground detention and retention structures as they were designed. He asked us to take a look at other alternatives and I said we would and we'll see if we can reduce those structures and, and, and come up with a more thoughtful, more uh, low impact design and, uh, and see if we could reduce those structures uh, that are currently proposed underneath the parking lot and the driveway. Um, that you see tonight. Okay, all right. <clears throat> I think I think we have a handle on it. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't, 
I don't want to hear anything other than the, you know, the design that you, you're going to advance. So to Mr. Shomer's point, I, I think in the interest of judicial expediency, is that what we're striving for? One of the things we're striving for? Um, judicial economy? There you go. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, Ms. Joffer is a litigator. She would know better. I, I, um, <laughs> I, I don't do that stuff, but it feels right to me, but I'll, I'll be persuaded by uh, the members of the, of, of the, uh, of the panel, if they think otherwise. Mr. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think it's uh, worthwhile to wait uh, uh, until we have something that we can actually sink our teeth into. This would be at least the third iteration, maybe the fourth. Um, this stuff is is uh, too important not to take a deep dive into. So um, I'd rather dive into what uh, what the current proposal is as as opposed to one that is now appears to be obsolete. Mr. Offer? I agree. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Schumer, I, I think we'll do that. Uh, we think we'll put the drainage conversation off. We like seeing Mr. Burke. Um, he can uh, he can do something else tonight. Uh, uh, or he can join us. Now, that does leave us with a, a bit of a dilemma with respect to the peer review. I'm looking at the calendar ne next week. Ms. Barrett has lined up a peer review. I'd, I'd still like to proceed with hearing from the peer review of the site civil. Um, and, and perhaps we can still get Mr. Reardon in here to give us an update on where he is, even if that's un incomplete. I would urge us to not rush Mr. Burke's work to Mr. O'Brien's point. This, is, this has become, you know, it could be the biggest issue in this hearing. And obviously there's a fair bit of local concern as expressed in the site walk and, and elsewhere. So what I'd like to ask, I'd like to propose a, a three-part uh, proposal. First is we'll put off the drainage and we'll encourage Mr. Burke and Mr. Reardon to continue to work. We'd like to continue with the peer review next week so that we can hear from the peer review consultants that have been able to complete their work. And I know, I believe Mr. Dirk will be submitting a letter um, and we may be able to hear from our landscape uh, planner on the redesign with respect to the garden and the environs. And um, we could hear from the site civil. And to the extent that Mr. Reardon uh, 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 is able to, maybe he can provide an update. Then we could follow with a, with, a, with a hearing with Mr. Burke and Mr. Reardon, perhaps at the same time, something like that. Um, so that my point would be is, uh, it looks like it's two weeks for Mr. Burke. Um, now, you, you, it may not be enough time, I don't know. It sounds like there's some more work to be done this is, this is important, as Mr. O'Brien said, so I, I don't want you to think that that's a mandate from the board, but I think I have established my uh, bona fides on, on, on keeping an eye on this schedule. Um, now, on April 21st, uh, we have a town presentations. It could be that we put that off because I truly would like to hear from Mr. Ber Mr. Berkeley after he has the advantage of being able to see what the design is. Because remember, Mr. Berkeley is 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 uh, is focused not just on on-site but off-site impacts as well. So there's a lot to hear from Mr. Berkeley. So we'll we'll have to. Um, it, it looks like if we if we focus tonight or ask you, Mr. Schomer, to walk us through the waivers, if you're able to do that, we can do that tonight. Perhaps that won't take too long. Um, we'll we'll put the drainage off. We'll get back to peer review, and then Mr. Burke can provide us with an update next week on where he is with Mr. Rannon and we can fill in the rest of the schedule. Fair enough? Works for me. Fair okay. enough, Mr. Chair. Uh, one, one quick question. Is, um, is the town's peer reviewer for architecture planning on being available next week as well? Mr. Chair, do you want me to answer that? They're, they're, all, lined up. they're all lined up to be here next week, including um, traffic. I was able to, okay. Mr. Dirk could be with us for a while next week. So all four peer reviewers are planning to be here and we'll have reviewed the revised plan. So, just so we we'll just have to let Reardon know. Reardon is a little bit of a work in progress because the design is a work in progress. That's, that's the real change. Understood. Yeah, yeah. but it, it could be. I mean, frankly, that 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 feels like it calls for its own session in any of it. Yeah, you know, maybe I don't know. Okay. 
Yeah, I just can't speak for their availability, but um, I will I will talk to them tomorrow and find okay. out about Tom's schedule. Mr. Schober? Yes. Um, so would you would you like me to share screen, Mr. Chair, for, with the, uh, the waiver list and I can put this up or would you what? like to just go through it? No, I'd like you to share the screen if you don't mind. Not at all. Okay. Show that. Everybody see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is our, I'll just um, <clears throat> a bit bigger for me. This is our, this is our revised uh, waiver list. Um, this has been reduced fairly significantly since, since the original filing. And there's a note at the last page that outlines exactly which waiver requests were, were removed. And a number of those waivers have, yeah, I mean, have, to, have to do with this. Mr. Uh, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Schumer, yes. Mr. O'Brien. Mr. Chairman and Mr. Schumer, my, my, my apologies, but, but uh, just for the, the folks at home and, and those who did, don't sit on the board, just maybe a couple, three sentences on what the waiver list is, what the purpose of this exercise is to just uh, level set folks would be helpful, I think. Sure, I think that's a, a great idea, uh, Mr. O'Brien. Um, so the, the waiver list that we have filed, this is a requirement of the, the Chapter 40B regulations. And, and part of the, the 40B process is requesting what are called waivers from local zoning regulations and other local bylaws. Um, so that's what this, this list here represents. Most of the requests that we have made uh, are, are referring to the zoning bylaw itself, but there are an, a, a number of other local regulations that we have requested bylaws from, um, in particular, the, the demolition delay bylaw, which would be implicated even on this, this new proposal, um, which is uh, saving the, the garden structure and most of the existing home. Um, however, part of the, the structure would be altered. So uh, we would be requesting a waiver under that. Um, so the, the, the way the waivers work is, is the applicant, and that's us, we, re we request the waivers from these local bylaws, and the, the board's task in this process is to make the determination as to whether there are any local concerns uh, that are presented by this project that would justify denying these requests for waivers on the basis that the local concern outweighs the, the regional need for affordable housing that this project would create. Um, so that's, that's my, my five cent tour of what the, the waiver list represents. And, and if anything was unclear, I'm happy to answer any questions or uh, we can proceed. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, um, thank you very much. I think, I think that was a, a good, good suggestion to start there. So the, the first waiver request that we have is, is uh, chapter six of the local Milton bylaws. This is a police regulation bylaw. And, and, and I would say that a, a number of these local regulations and, and in particular the regulations that are maintained by DPW uh, Public Works, the reason why we have requested these is because buried in the text of these, these bylaws there is frequently a, re a requirement to file for a local separate per separate local permit uh, for various aspects of construction. So in this case, um, the the section is section 33 of this police regulation bylaw, and it requires a separate select board permit to break or dig up the ground in any street or sidewalk, and that would be implicated by the the, the work that we're doing at the the street level with the curb cut and the sidewalk opening and potentially the, the, uh, the bus waiting area that we have proposed on Blue Hill Avenue. So this is strictly a, a, a process waiver as I would, I would describe this for the, for the, simply for the, the requirement to get this local permit for the, from the select board. And the reason why we, we've asked for that is um, as the name comprehensive permit implies, the idea behind 40B is that all of these local permits uh, other than other than a building permit or a conservation permit or things under state law, all local permits in this process are actually issued by the zoning board of appeals. And so, what we were we would, would be requesting under this waiver request is that the uh, the board of appeals actually act as the permitting granting authority under this uh, local bylaw. And that's that's the only reason for this request. We're not 
requesting any special treatment or, or exemption from, from the technical regulations of this bylaw. It's simply the, the process of, of getting a separate permit for it. A couple questions on this. So, and if you don't mind, we, we, I may, we may have questions on particular ones. Now, do you know and did you verify that a local permit is actually required on a state highway? For the, for the, uh, for the state permit or for a local permit, Mr. Chair? Well, I, I thought you, when you, when you referred to the curb cut and the bus cutout, I thought you were referring to Route 138, which is a state highway. That's, that's so, true. And, and my understanding is that there would be a separate state process uh, for yeah. that for that cut as well. So what this would, would do is only uh, streamline the process of, of the separate local permit that would be needed to do that curb cut. Yeah. The, state, the state permit is my understanding is, is required in any event. We, we're not allowed to get waivers from those. Right. No, I'm, I'm familiar with that. I, I, the question, and, and uh, I just asked Mr. Zawinski if, if the town routinely also requires a local permit where MassDOT both owns and operates the road. It's not a state numbered route. It's a, it's more than a state numbered route. It's actually a state highway. So we'll just put that question out there. And I, and the reason I asked that question is I, I'm a little reluctant on behalf of the board to waive something that involves public safety. So if you're asking in, I mean, this is my question. How is it that you, the board would be in any position to permit a third party to be out in a traveled roadway without notice and a, arrangement for traffic control and the like. Are you asking for something that's that extensive or for, for simply the fact that you don't know, do not want to go to the board of selectmen for, uh, for, for, for an actual permit, but will, will otherwise adhere to, the, to coordinate with public works or the Milton Police Department with respect to having workers in the traveled way. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, that's our intent is, is simply to avoid the select board process for this permit. Uh, it's not to avoid any, any of the technical requirements or the notice requirements that are, are typically uh, enforced by DPW or the, the police uh, in, in any way. We're not, we're not seeking waivers from that. Uh, okay. and, and certainly nothing involving safety. It's just, it's just the, the separate permit that we're that we're, um, we're attempting to streamline with this. And with, res with, res with respect to this, it is just Blue Hill Avenue. We're not, ask we're not asking for an opening in Vos Hill Lane or Robbins or Meeting House, or it is just the 138, is that correct? I believe under the current plan, there is some proposal to do work in Meeting House Lane for the sewer connection and, and potentially for the, for the drainage connection as well. Okay. So I, I would say um, the, the exact answer to that is to be determined based on the final plan. Um, but I'll make a note of my, for myself to, to, uh, to keep that in mind as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, where-, where Ms. Barrett. A, thank you. Um, in a situation like this, where they're looking for a procedural waiver, the things that you're concerned about can be written into the decision as a condition of approval. Yeah, yeah. It's just to be clear. Agreed, one hundred percent, and that's that's commonly done, you know. And and I don't I don't know if this is the case in this particular instance, but something that I found in, in other towns is sometimes these bylaws will be on the books, and there'll be these permitting requirements, and it's something that is not even really anyone is aware that these are there because these are all bylaws. And in this in this particular instance, my my recollection is that this this bylaw is at least old enough that the, the select board is still being called the board of selectmen. Um, so it, it may just be a, a permit that is not, not typically even obtained. Uh, you, you would just work with DPW. But again, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case with this one. I, I can think of few more important things than getting the approval to open up one of the Commonwealth streets, Mr. Yep. Shulman, you know. <laughs> so, all right, fair enough. Uh, we can move on. I have a, a oh, Ms. Yeah. Joffer. Thank you. Um, just a big picture question. Is the intention of the applicant not to approach the Milton Select Board for any permits? So will, will you be approaching the Milton Select Board for any permits or is the expectation that it will all be but all permitting will be waived and run through this process. 
other than other than building permits the the idea for this particular project would be that all all the local permits would go through the board of appeals and i i nothing is coming to mind immediately that would in a normal 40b process require a select board permit but but perhaps there's there's something that i'm not thinking of that that um, ms barrett can has in mind no, I, I mean, I do agree. The whole point is to consolidate all the local permitting under a single board. But that's where, um, you know, things end up being made conditions in the permit in order to protect the interests that the permit that would otherwise be granted by the selectman or someone else, where those things kind of get preserved. So you're waiving, but then you're imposing conditions in the permit, if that makes any sense. And in your yes, permit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Ms. Joffre, are you all set? I am, thank you. Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Schomer. Okay, thank you. So the next the next waiver that we have requested is under chapter eight, section three of the Milton uh, Town Ways Bylaw, which has to do with removal of trees and stone walls. And and this is this is a, a waiver that we have requested to permit the work in in and around the right of way that would affect the wall to create the sightline triangles and the new access driveway. Um, and I believe there is some, uh, there may be one or two trees up in that area that um, that are proposed to be removed, although I may be thinking of the, the previous plan. Um, but again, this, this, this waiver can be narrowly tailored uh, so that it's clear that this is authorizing only the work that's shown on the plan and, and nothing in addition to that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm assuming that uh, Blue Hill Avenue is not a scenic way. That's my understanding, Mr. Chair, and that's one of the the waiver requests that we actually removed. We had we had included that initially just to to cover ourselves, but upon uh, further review of the bylaw and the the statute that authorizes uh, local scenic way bylaws, my understanding is that Blue Hill Avenue is not eligible as a as a scenic byway. Yeah. Uh, because it's a state numbered highway that is not yeah. limited to the jurisdiction of, of just the town of Milton. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So that, that waiver request we've removed entirely. That okay. is not necessary anymore. Okay. Um, should we move on to the next one, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. So the next one we're moving into the zoning bylaw itself. And this, this waiver request I've consolidated two into one and it's, uh, section Roman numeral 3A and B, and these are the principal and accessory use regulations for this zoning district. And what we're requesting is a waiver from these sections uh, to authorize the principal use of the property for this multifamily residential use of 92 apartments, uh, together with the associated, uh, maybe uh, classified as an accessory use, such as the common areas, amenity spaces, the building management, uh, rental office, marketing office, uh, parking structure under the buildings and signage for this project. And, and again, this would be limited to the, to the project plans. And the reason why this, this waiver is necessary is because in this zoning district, the, the, the principal and accessory uses are um, for the most part limited to single family use and, and related accessory uses. Thank you. Questions on the, on the members? Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Schomer. Okay, thank you. Um, the next section is chapter 10, section Roman numeral th uh, 3B3, which has to do with signs and billboards. Um, and we are requesting a waiver from this section for the project signage, which I don't believe has at this point been designed or shown on the plans yet, but this, so this was another condition that we'd need to narrowly tailor to be uh, as specific as possible. And, and what we're proposing at this point is building mounted signage to, to show you the buildings and the locations to direct uh, traffic and pedestrians around the site, um, traffic signal signage, advisory signage, um, and then we're proposing one illuminated monument sign at the site entrance and that that design is to be determined and so the this kind of language can be can be crafted in, in a condition of, of the the permit to, to are, be are you specific. proposing that <clears throat> are you proposing that the sign plan 
signage plan for the for the design will be a part of the completed application prior to the close of the hearing, or are you proposing a condition that a, a, a sign a, a, a sign arrangement for the design will be further approved by the board at a later date? Well, I think that's that's really the the preference of the board. You know, I, well, I've seen we can't approve ways. something that we don't see. So the. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, let, yeah. let me put a different. Are you going to give us a signage plan before the close of the hearing? I and and I would put that to the board. If the board wants to see the signage plan, then then we can certainly put one together. Uh, I've seen it done that way. I've seen it done in the other way that you you suggested, Mr. Chair, which would be we would come back to the board uh, to show you what the sign is proposed to look like and and get your approval for that. I think it would be better to see a signage plan sooner rather than later, only to have maximum opportunity to comment on it. My experience is, is when things can happen post permit, you have you have less of an opportunity to have meaningful comment. So I, we've not seen any signage to the extent you're thinking about signage. I would encourage the applicant to put that on the table. Okay, I think that makes sense, Mr. Chair. The that that the signage issue that goes to the the finer details of the project, so that that hasn't been designed yet. But I'll okay. I'll put that to our architect and landscape architect and have them put together something that we can show to the board. Fair enough, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a I have a couple of questions surrounding this issue, and let me divide <clears throat> it into uh, into two parts, if you will, uh, relative to signage issues. Uh, First part would be signage involving, um, assuming for the moment, if the uh, construction begins, uh, signage associated with the uh, construction phase, initial marketing phase, uh, if you will, perhaps uh, temporary signage. Are you suggesting that uh, the board uh, have a role in that or should take a role in that as well? That's a, that's a, that's an excellent question that I think what we're, what we're thinking about it with this request is really the more permanent signage and, and not nothing to do with construction. Certainly that would be something that we would, we would need to do in accordance with uh, DPW regulations in terms of marking parking areas and, and uh, staging areas and things of that nature. Um, so I would say that, this is, this is just the permanent signage that we're proposing here. Well, I mean, let me give you an example. I mean, I think okay. that there would be significant concerns and not that you could do this with uh, the site and whatnot, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to have a situation where, uh, uh, you know, a gazillion units coming to this site soon and we have a, a, a massive billboard that uh, uh, dominates the neighborhood. I certainly wouldn't want to have that sort of loophole. I don't think that that's your intention, but I certainly would, would want to make sure that we address that issue. I, I think that's that's a that's a valid concern and that is not what we are what we are trying to get permitted with this and, and the condition of approval can can be very specific about that. Okay. Um, if you're ready, I have a second set of second set of questions on this. Uh, okay. Uh, most of this, the vast majority of these waivers and whatnot deal with uh, public safety issues, building issues. For example, later on we'll be talking about the fill bylaw stuff like that. Um, um, and while the the Board of Appeals has occasionally delved into the vagaries of signage. Uh, that has been mostly been the purview of the Board of Selectmen in this town. Um, why wouldn't we want the Board of Selectmen to exercise their unique expertise on signage issues as opposed to those of us on this board? Well, um... That I think that goes to the the comprehensive nature of this this permit. Going back to that again, and um, you know what I could say is that it's certainly something that the board could do. Uh, could could ask a member of the select board to come in and, and offer their comments once we have prepared a signage plan for for your review and for their review, uh, similar to how the the planning board has has offered comments, and I believe the select board as well has offered comments on that. So. 
So ultimately, you would be the permitting granting authority, but you could you could do so with their uh, advice and consent, as it were. Um, would the people responsible for the development of the signage, would that be uh, the architect or are there uh, specific signage architects, if you will? That is, I think that's beyond my, my knowledge, uh, Mr. O'Brien. I, I would assume it's the, the architect who would, who would do that, but I'll have to, to ask D'Artagnan from Embark to see if he could um, get back to us on that. Thank you, Mr. Schumer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Schumer. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, can I make a quick comment on, on this issue before we uh, move on? Mr. Zwinski. Yeah, uh, it, it just to, to Mr. O'Brien's point, um, the, the select board has, has um, in, in recent vintage, um, backed away from, uh, from, from the signage conversation. Um, there, there was a sort of interim period as we were amending our, our sign bylaw that they had um, more of a hand on the tiller. Um, but the, the town has had for, for quite some time a, a very um, talented and, and incisive sign review committee that administers our sign bylaw. Um, and, and just, I, I, I think this is the direction the board is going. So I'll just reinforce those, those comments, but I, I do consider the signage plan, especially if we're considering a, an illuminated monument sign, which is um, you know, not, not a typical thing uh, you see in the residential zones in the town of Milton. Mm -hmm. um, I would consider the signage plan to be um, an element of, of the architecture and the design um, that we've already reviewed. So um, I, I, I think it would be um, you know, very appropriate to, to, to see those designs at this stage um, and, and as Mr. Schomer, um, you know, mentions in, in terms of, you know, getting input and, you know, <laughs> advice and consent, as it were, um, I, I think that our sign review committee would be very happy to provide some input um, based on their experience on, on signage in Milton um, that, that I think that um, the applicant would, would find pretty valuable. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be something that necessarily holds up other elements of the review, um, but I think it would be very helpful to have, um, you know, both this board and potentially the side review committee offers some some comments. Very good, definitely. Yep, we we value all all that feedback. Um, it's it's important for this project to make it as 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 good as it can be. Um, so we would we would welcome their their feedback. Um, so shall we move on to the yes. next request? Yes. Okay. So the, the next request is chapter 10, section 4A, which is the earth materials removal and fill uh, section of the zoning bylaw. And the request here is because uh, this section requires a special permit for earth removal and fill and, and imposes a number of technical regulations that are applicable to that activity. And so what we would be requesting is a waiver from the special permit requirement to do the earth removal and fill that would be associated with a construction and the comprehensive permit would, would act as the approval under this section and, um, and the technical requirements and specifications, I would have to defer to our civil engineer um, in, in terms of, of what, what specific waivers we would be needing and requesting on, on, on that. And I think that probably would be a, a matter that's to be determined once we get to a final version of these plans. Um, so here again, the, the, the permit could specify conditions uh, and, and technical requirements and what exactly is and is not being waived. But primarily this is uh, for the, the separate special permit requirement. Yeah, I think on this one, we've spent a fair bit of time on this bylaw over the years. I, I think it would help to have some idea of how close you are to complying with the requirements of the bylaw at a, at a high level, mostly because I'd like the peer review to have an opportunity to capture this and to comment on it. Another way to say what you said is that the comprehensive permit is the special permit. Um, and that, but the real question is, which, you know, I don't think is offensive and I think is certainly consistent with the spirit of the hearing that we're having. The, the bigger question is, is what is exactly going on with respect to earth materials, removal, cut and fill at the site, particularly given its expansive slope, slope and the amount of time we've talked about um, We've talked about how these um, elevations are going to be dealt with. So I'm interested in the substance of it. And I think that that needs to be disclosed so that we can capture that and make that part of our deliberations and review of the, of the, um, of the, of the permit. But with respect to the particulars of whether or not 
you need a you know another special permit uh, from the Board of Appeals that you, your your point is taken. Okay. And I, I think that makes a lot of sense, Mr. Chair, to, to drill down on the details as the project <clears throat> moves forward. Um, typically, these kind of bylaws, uh, they'll be, you know, some of them have to do with ledge cutting or, or slope protection, and there'll be rise and run uh, factors that you have to take into consideration. So they can get fairly technical. So as, as we move forward towards a final version of the plans, I think we can, we can drill down on those details. Very good. Questions okay. from the members? I don't have a question, just a comment. I, I think for my purposes, a peer review on the specific waivers um, as they become more detailed would, would be essential. Yeah. Whether it's the peer review or the town because it's nice to know that we can add conditions, but we, in order to draft those conditions, even using the appropriate language, we still need the benefit of the experts who typically, right, would review these. So I, I just, I agree that perhaps a second session is warranted and, and this is more of an overview, but I, I anticipate that the details will be fleshed out sometime later. Yeah. Mr. Chair, that, Ms. Barrett, thank that you. is in the scope of the peer review contracts yeah. that Great. they will provide recommended condition language. So they will review all these, you know, as, as better information becomes available. Yeah, I think I, it would help, I think, Ms. Barrett to, um, I guess this would be part of the site civil peer review. I think it would help to call attention to this bylaw in particular, sure, sure. Um, given the challenges with the slope. I, I'm, if, if it were normal, Phil, I think we would be less concerned. But mm -hmm. as I understand the design, <clears throat> in order to make that circumferential driveway, we're going to be looking at a fairly substantial wall coming up from, so you'd be, if you stood at the end of Meeting House Lane, assuming you could see through the screen, you, you, you're gonna be looking at a big wall because that that road is going to be fairly high, highly high, it's gonna be elevated. Yep. So uh, in order to make that grade. So that's an example. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Ms. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd also know uh, the same sort of concern though perhaps to a lesser degree relative to the very first waiver, the, uh, the breaking of the pavement. We, we would wanna make sure that whatever the decision is written that uh, it's done correctly. And then when the holes filled in, for example, that it's patched appropriately, all that sort of stuff. So just wanna, you know, just as we write this, just if we get to that point, I wanna make sure that it's, we write it correctly. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, uh, on that one, I, I, I'd like to hear from the town on what their usual practice is on 138. I have every confidence that MassDOT's state highway access permit will, uh, will be comprehensive. Mr. Schomer. Okay, so the next waiver request is uh, section five of the zoning bylaw, which is the height regulations. In this zoning district, the height limit is two and a half stories uh, or 35 feet, whichever is less. And the waiver that we are requesting uh, for this section would, would permit the building as is currently proposed, which as the board knows has variable height in, in different sections, which would go from two stories above parking to I believe four stories above parking with, with the parking under grade. So what I have focused on in this section is the, the most exposed uh, vertical height from grade to the top of the roof line, which is on the, I believe the north facing side of the property uh, facing the Delphi Academy, which in this specific location would have five stories, including the exposed uh, section of the parking structure underneath the building and to the roof line, which would in this section measure 57.5 feet. And, and is that height measured the way the bylaw requires the measurement? I think it's from the average mean grade of the lot. Mm -hmm. So one question on this is the 50, 57, where's the grade? What's the grade? But I just wanna make sure it's off the right base and we ought to be using the same height that the bylaw requires the measurement to be taken from 
so that we understand the relative difference between what the bylaw requires and what the what the permit seeks. Understood. I appreciate the fact that this is the maximum height. That's your that's what you've represented, yep. which is right. But I want to know what the base is off of. Okay. Okay. That's something I can I can put to to Jim Burke to calculate yeah. and um, and D'Artagnan's team could 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 do the, the building part of that and get Thank back you. to you with a definitive answer on that. Thank you. Members. I have a question. Um, Ms. Dawson. Delmer, do we do you have a sense of how many units um, would be sort of within the current two and a half story limitation and how many would be above? That's a, that's a good question. I, I don't on uh, off the top of my head know the answer to that. I, I, I do see that our, one of our architects, Dan Riggs from Embark is, is on the call tonight. And, and I don't know if he could answer that one on the fly, um, perhaps as we, if we move forward with, with the waiver list and he could, could look into that and, and, and give us an answer on that. Hi, Jesse. Yeah, we could look into that. It's relevant to the mean grade. I think we would want to give a more informed answer and I'd want to look into that and get back to you. Yeah, that, that, that could be complicated. Yeah, yeah, you might need to model that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Schomer. Yep. So so thank you for that uh, question, Ms. Joffer. We'll, we'll get back to you with an answer on that. Thank you very much. Okay. So the next section that we have requested is section six of the zoning bylaw. These are the uh, dimensional regulations. And in this zoning district, the RA district, the, the, the minimum requirements are, are outlined here. Uh, lot area, 40,000 square feet, uh, more or less one acre zoning. Frontage of 150 feet, front yard setback 30, side yard 15 rear yard 30 feet, uh, maximum building coverage of 15%, uh, maximum gross floor area of 30%, and a minimum open area of, of 69,505 square feet, which is a, a calculation that is performed uh, based on uh, assessing 75% of the sum of building coverage and other impervious areas, which uh, Jim Burke's team did. So the, the waivers that we're actually requesting, we meet most of these requirements because it's such a large lot. Uh, we, we currently have 173,000 uh, square feet and change. We have over 340 feet of frontage on Blue Hill Avenue. We have a front yard setback of just over 30 feet, which is zoning compliant. Side yard setbacks to the left and right are 50.7 and uh, 36.2 feet respectively. Rear yard setback is 58.6, which is just over uh, twice the requirement, or just under twice the requirement, excuse me. The, the two waivers that we are requesting here are the building coverage. We're requesting 21.4 uh, as opposed to 15%, and the gross floor area, uh, which is uh, 67, sorry, 63.7, as opposed to the 30 that's required by zoning. Uh, open area is met in this case. Um, for these for this proposal. I don't I don't have any questions. Members. Okay. Pretty pretty straightforward. Um, the next section is section 6A1, which is number of dwellings per lot. Um, in this zoning district, one is the maximum. We're requesting the 92 rental apartments on a single lot. Okay. Another straightforward one. Uh, the next request is buildings in, in front yard section 6B4 and 6B7. Uh, this, these sections require that there's no accessory building within 40 feet of the front lot line and no building with a ground coverage of 5,000 square feet within 50 feet of the, the front uh, lot line. We're requesting a waiver from this section to allow the West building, which is the, the building at the front of the site uh, towards Blue Hill Avenue with a setback of 30.9 feet to the front lot line along Blue Hill Avenue. And uh, we've also, we've, we've tried to, in, to draft this section, uh, sorry, this, this waiver request to be, um, to cover the retaining walls in the event that they are 
deemed by the building ins inspector to, to constitute a building or a structure, which the town's zoning bylaw does define uh, structure fairly, fairly broadly to include retaining walls. Um, so that's, that's what we're proposing for this, for this section. But again, this will be all these all all these details around the plans that you'll be providing and that will be shown in detail on the, for the board. Yeah. Yeah. And a condition like this, um, going back to the the idea of conditions, uh, the, the, the waiver like this would would include specific ties to the to the plans that the board is approving. Yeah. And so if there are any changes that that we would be proposing after approval, we'd have to come back to the board. <clears throat> Thank you. So the, the next waiver request is um, section 6, C1, C2, C4, and C6. And these sections all have to do with buildings in side yards. Um, and I've outlined them here. There's, there's five specific requirements that, we're, that we are uh, requesting waivers for. And I can go into them specifically if you'd like. But this, again, goes back to, um, to the buildings within the side yards of the, of the lot. And we would be requesting waivers from these, these uh, technical requirements to allow the buildings as shown on the, the plans. Okay. Um, so the next section is, is uh, more of the same buildings in rear yards. This is section 6 D1, D3, and D4. Here again are the, the technical requirements uh, with respect to the proximity to the, to the rear lot line. And, and we're requesting waivers from these technical requirements to permit the buildings shown on the site plan, in, including the, um, the retaining walls that we're showing on those plans to the extent they're deemed to be a structure. Any questions on these ones? Okay, uh, moving on to section seven. This is parking regulations. And I believe this is the last um, substantive waiver that we're requesting under the zoning bylaw. Um, this is, these are a number of technical regulations that are applicable to the size, location, and number of required uh, off-street parking spaces. And we would be requesting a waiver of this section to approve the design, the dimensions of the parking spaces, the locations, uh, setbacks to property lines, screening and landscaping around parking areas, topography, lighting, and layout, all as shown as on the site plans. And, and I noted in this request that we're, we're proposing 143 parking spaces, 81 of which are in the garage and 62 are on the surface of the site. Yeah. Okay. The next section is section 8A, which has to do with enforcement of the bylaw. We're requesting a waiver of this only because it, the, the language and the way it, it is written suggests that enforcement can be sought um, where, where the, the terms and, and requirements of the bylaw are not met. And obviously because we're requesting waivers uh, for a number of these sections, um, that, that is something that could be said for this project. So we're, we're requesting a waiver from this only to the extent that enforcement otherwise might be sought uh, with respect to the waivers. And that can be crafted carefully and specifically to, to be sure that that's, that's all we're asking for in this case. Yeah, I'm gonna to confess to not completely understanding what, that, what this, give me an example. Are you, you're, you're not suggesting you won't get a building permit. No, 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 not at all. We, we're required to get a building permit yeah. as is every chapter 40B development. Um, what this has to do is, is more has to do with enforcement requests. So for example, um, if, if a, a neighbor sees their, their neighbor building a, a shed in the backyard without a building permit, and maybe it violates zoning, they could go to the building inspector and say, I want you to enforce the zoning bylaw because this guy doesn't have a building permit and, and the, the, the shed violates zoning. The yeah. building inspector would go down and, and take a look, and if if it does violate zoning, then he would issue an enforcement order and perhaps a teardown. So all we're, what we're asking for with this section is for instances where we've requested waivers from the zoning bylaw um, pursuant to the to the comprehensive permit that the building inspector couldn't get a call from a neighbor who says, for example, they have a 57.5 foot building; it's only 35 feet allowed. I want you to enforce the zoning bylaw. That's what, that's all we're asking for. 
But uh, you're not, nor are you suggesting that the comprehensive permit can't be enforced. No, absolutely not. The, yeah. the comprehensive so, permit would be enforceable. So you'd be, you, you, are, you, are you effectively requesting that in lieu of enforcing the building code, you, you will, we're simply going to be enforcing the comprehensive permit? Is that how I understand it? Well, the building inspector would be enforcing both is what I would say. He, he would be enforcing the building code. We're, we're subject to that. We don't I meant the that. zoning bylaw. I'm sorry. The zoning bylaw. Yeah, correct. Yeah. To the yeah. extent only that it's been waived by the board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that, that, that paragraph packs a punch, Mr. Schomer. It, uh, we'll, I, I, I appreciate that. We'll spend some time with that. Mm hmm yeah, we can we can craft some language and and perhaps get into to greater detail on that. And and this once again, this is an important one to get right in in the permit itself. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may, Mr. O'Brien, I just want to echo your comment uh, that this particular one packs a punch. This one gave me pause as well. I thank the applicant for his uh, clarifications. But uh, I agree with you. This will be one that would need some time spent on it. Definitely. Very good. Mr. Schomer. Sure. Thank you very much. The, the next section that we are requesting a waiver from is Section 8B, uh, which has to do with submission of plots and plans. And uh, we're requesting a waiver of this uh, only to the extent that, that it would be read as exceeding the requirements of the building code and 40B and the, the 40B regulations uh, for this for this permitting process. The, yeah. the, um, the building permit process and the DPW process, that's, that's separate. And to the extent additional detail, of course, uh, construction level plans, we're not seeking any, any waiver from that, um, yeah. just in connection with this permitting process. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. O'Brien. Um, again, going back to enforcement issues, uh, this would not prevent the uh, building inspector who during the course of construction may see the need for uh, additional specificity of a plan or something like that from requesting it of the applicant as the project is moving forward. Mr. Schumer. That's that's certainly not our intent to prevent the building inspector from from doing that. And and I guess here is another instance where we'll need to be careful at, at, at drafting the language of this one to make sure that that's something that that he can do. So here's you, you just look at this. These two sections, I know we'll spend some time on them, but I, I'm looking to make sure that if this project goes forward, and I, I don't want anybody to take any indication from these types of questions that I have made up my mind because the hearing is not closed. But if this project is to go forward or any other project for that matter, we wanna make sure that the building inspector, just because it's a 40B, uh, continues to maintain appropriate authority to be able to effectively perform his duties or her duties as, uh, an inspector, overseer, protector of the public safety. No objection from us on that. Uh, uh, not at all. We, we agree 100%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Schomer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next section that we're requesting is Section 8C, which has to do with issuance of occupancy certificates. And this section, this is really hand in glove, I would say, with the, the enforcement waiver that we're requesting, uh, because it has to do with uh, enforcing the zoning bylaw. And in instances where zoning is not complied with, the building inspector can refuse to issue um, um, occupancy certificates. So as with the enforcement uh, section, this, this waiver request would be narrowly tailored uh, to, sim to simply to the waiver requests in this, in this process. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next section that we're requesting is Section 8D, which is the the uh, the town site plan review uh, bylaw. We're requesting a waiver for the site plan review process, and and that's part of the comprehensive permit um, process that the, the board's approving. Uh, if the board approves this project, um, the approval of the site plan would be included in in the overall approval of the comprehensive permit. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, next section is 9B, uh, which is uh, notice requirements applicable to applications before the board. This one, this is, I think at this point, maybe moot, but I can I can go back and, and look at it again. Under 40B, notice of hearings is, is uh, set forth in, in Chapter 40A, um, and, and that was complied with in this case. Um, the notices were issued by the town and, and published in the paper and sent out to all the abutters. So um, we may be able to, to remove this, this request here. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next section is Section 9C, which has to do with special permits or other permits. Um, these are the conditions and findings for special permits. And uh, as we discussed a, a little while ago, there were a couple of at least one special permit that, that is required for this project uh, other than outside of the 40B process. So this would, this would go along with that waiver request. Okay. Okay. So that's the last waiver of the zoning bylaw. And from there we move into the, uh, the other local bylaws. The first one would be the Milton Stormwater Management Bylaw. And we have requested a waiver of this um, for the, the permitting process under that bylaw. And this is another instance where the, if a waiver is granted, it would be, it would be narrowly tailored uh, to the site plan that the board would be approving and subject to peer review by Tetratech to ensure that the stormwater management complies with all state and federal regulations and, and meets his design and, and um, his design standards in terms of engineering and best practices for managing the stormwater. And obviously this, as we, as we saw on, on Saturday for anyone who was at the site walk, this is a big issue and we recognize that and we're not we're not seeking to to do a project that that doesn't manage the stormwater. We are subject to all the the state stormwater management standards, and we will comply with those. And if we don't, the project can't happen, no matter what the board uh, wants to do with it. So um, we're aware of that, and and this this condition can be narrowly tailored. I would say. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions on that one from the members? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Not now. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next bylaw is the demolition delay bylaw. Technically, the title of it is the demolition of historically significant buildings bylaw. This building and the uh, gardens, and I believe also actually the carriage house, which is which is not a historic structure that was built about twenty years ago. I believe all of these structures and perhaps also the walls at the front of the site are subject to this bylaw uh, because they have been registered uh, with the, the state macro system by the historical commission in Milton. So we would be requesting a waiver of this bylaw and, and this is a much lim more limited request than, than in our original proposal, obviously, because we are now proposing to save the entirety of the garden structure and most of the house um, so the waiver that, that we are requesting from this would uh, permit the proposed work and renovation of the building and structures. And, and I know that there is some work that will be needed uh, to the garden structure, such as repointing and, and things of that nature to, to bring it up to, a, um, to an intact con condition, even though it is, it is in very good condition, there is some work that, that it needs. Um, and it would also authorize the demolition of the, the carriage house uh, built in more recent years. Okay. Okay. Yes. The, the next section that we're requesting, this is the, the board's rules and regulations for comp comprehensive permit applications. This is, this is one that we typically include in, in 40B filings primarily for the filing fee um, because, and the reason for that is that in, in 40B jurisprudence, the, the way that the housing appeals committee requires applicants to proceed with, with, um, with, with respect to the filing fees is that you have to pay the fee and then object later. And so um, our, our, our very earnest hope is that we, this project is moving in the right direction and, and that we're, we're, we're moving to a, to a point where the, the board feels comfortable approving this subject to uh, a number of conditions, obviously, um, in which case it would not be necessary to, to go to the Housing Appeals Committee and, and appeal that fee. But that's the reason why we've requested the waiver. Thank you. Okay, any questions on that one? 
Nope. No. Okay. Um, the next three, these are all these are DPW regulations, and these are the the DPW right of way regulations, uh, public water and public sewer uh, regulations, and and these all have a have separate permitting process through the through the DPW. These these are our waiver requests that as the project moves forward, I'm I'm hoping can be whittled down to the absolute bare minimum, and um, and perhaps eliminated entirely. Um, we're not seeking to to avoid the process of getting DPW approval for any of any of the work that we're doing. We're, we recognize that we're subject to that, and and we're not trying to avoid any of those obligations. Um, so so hopefully these can be taken out, if not uh, cut down significantly, and to the extent there are technical differences between what we're proposing and, and what the DPW prefers to see on these sites. Um, we would go through that with, with the peer reviewer and, and with Mr. Berkeley at DPW to make sure that everything is acceptable to all parties. Yeah. Okay. So it, below this, the uh, this note that I, I put into this updated list, these are the sections that we've removed in this in this uh, latest iteration of the waiver list. We have we have um, deleted the request for waivers from the a number of the police regulation bylaws having to do with uh, work and, and activity in, in public streets. Um, we had requested a wireless telecommunications facility uh, waiver. That is that's not necessary. We had requested a waiver from the there's a there's a provision of the zoning bylaw that actually deals with the wetlands. Um, on, on this proposal, we're, we're not proposing to do any, any work in the wetlands, so we, we have deleted that a request. Uh, there is a, a technical corner clearance bylaw that we, um, we do not need for this, for this project, so we've eliminated that. Uh, we had requested a waiver from the town's local wetlands bylaw, but since we're not proposing any work in the wetlands, that uh, becomes unnecessary. And then the remainder of these are additional DPW uh, technical requirements or Board of Health requirements, Conservation Commission regulations uh, that we don't need these waivers. So we, we have eliminated those. Okay, thank you. Is that, uh, is, that, is, that, is that the end of your presentation, Mr. Schomer? Yes, Mr. Chair, that's, that's yeah. the end. But let me, let me make three, uh, three comments with respect to this. First of all, I appreciate you doing this. I think with respect to the narrowly tailored comments, which were, um, which was mentioned often, I think the board would appreciate seeing as we move through this hearing proposed language from from you mm -hmm. on what that really means, rather than having us crafted whole whole cloth. Because until you said that, um, I was I was literally reading these summaries as being very expansive and hoping that we could narrowly tailor them. So if you are proposing to narrowly tailor them, and I think from your testimony, we can take that, that you are, I'd like to see, uh, you know, maybe even in the, in, the, in, the, in, a, in, the, in the form of a draft condition or a series of conditions um, that I'm sure you spend time with and I'm, I'm sure Ms. Barrett does in her work uh, throughout the Commonwealth on this issue. So that's not a tonight issue or a tomorrow issue. That's an issue for us, for you to think about in terms of long-term. Is that something that you could do? Definitely, definitely, okay. Mr. Chair. Right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is with respect to the town, speaking to Mr. Zerwinski now, one of the reasons why I wanted to go through this is it's obvious to me that uh, this is important for the town's feedback. So somebody like a Mr. Berkeley can have a better understanding of what the full extent of what's being asked. Uh, it, it, it's just right there on the table. So I'd like to make certain that the, the board of selectmen or all the boards with otherwise have jurisdiction over this matter that were referenced in this here in this waiver list have seen this application um have seen have seen this list so they understand it and the, the, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that sometimes people think that all we're talking about is zoning here and um you know this is more than about side, side yard setbacks as has just been demonstrated so let's understand that and then I think as part of the peer review or, or certainly as part of the town's input to the board on what this means and what it doesn't mean, we can, we can have the benefit of that from Mr. Berkeley or Mr. Prondack or, or the fire chief or, or the police chief or whatever. So that's just a, a, a thought that I had. And perhaps everybody 
perhaps that's obvious, but I, I wanted to state that for the record. And then lastly, to the members of the public who are listening, I wanted this presentation partly in a, in, in a sense of transparency because I think it provides a much fuller picture of what's on the table here in terms of what's actually being asked. Frankly, less concerned about the zoning bylaw because we all understand that and we've been talking about a lot of issues that are proximate to the zoning board very often. So we care about side setback and front setback, but we don't know a lot about street opening permits or the right to demolish walls and things like that. So I think this is a really important piece of the overall application. I want to have it have maximum visibility with respect to what it is. And I also think it's important to remind people what it's not. It's not asking for any waivers from the Commonwealth's building code as enforced by the local building inspector because it can't. And Mr. Schumer has made that clear, nor is it asking for waivers from the Wetlands Protection Act or any other state law that's applicable or any other federal law. What it's asking for is waivers from local bylaws that intersect with those laws, which happens occasionally, and local bylaws that are inconsistent with the application or that otherwise aren't being accommodated. I think that's a fair summary of what we saw. But I also think, unless it's explained, I don't know that it's intuitive to people as to what's actually being asked. So I wanted to make sure that everybody understands that. Now, if I've misstated that, now's the time to state it. But um, but but I but I am the chair, and you know I'd be careful about crossing the chair at this important part of the part of the hearing, Mr. Schumer. But if I did get it wrong, you should tell me right now. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. Um, so thank you for that, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll 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 return to this document. I think it's great. I'm glad that you did it. I appreciate the time you put into it, which was obviously a lot um, and the care that uh, was put in and you obviously read the bylaw and you spent a lot of time with the town's general bylaw. So thank you for that. Um, let me ask, uh, I want to ask the members if they've got any questions or comments or amplification of what I just said. And then I want to open it up to some, um, perhaps people have questions. Um, Ms. Joffer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have, um, I think, I think what, what will be amplification of what you said and hopefully consistent with what Mr. Schumer already has planned. But the waivers for sort of like the all sections of local bylaws that are to the extent they are different, like that is for me currently a sort of a challenging um, question, right? Because I don't know the extent to which they're different right. at all, right? It could be not different at all, in which case my voting for the waiver would be inconsequential. On the other hand, there could be a significant difference that is sort of local and specific to Milton that I want to know about. And so I think what I heard, and if not what I'm requesting is that as we get further along, those waiver requests can become more specific and detailed. So you're not asking for a waiver if there is no difference. And if there is a difference, you're making clear why it's something that we as the board should not be concerned about. So um, I think that's the plan. If not, that's that's my request. I think that's the plan. Mr. Schomer, is that the plan? That is the plan. I think I recognize that a lot of these waivers, especially the ones that you identified uh, that, that have language saying to the extent necessary or, or all sections or Requesting waivers from enforcement of the zoning bylaw, those, those I, I, I recognize can be um, can be big asks, and, and they look like they're they're big requests. So, what we tend to do in this process is we start with a very broad request and we whittle it down as narrowly as possible. So that is certainly our intent. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Joffer, you all set? Yes, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Nothing to add at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, no further questions from the board. Ms. Barrett, do you have anything you add like to add at this time? Um, no, just then to reinforce that I think some of these waivers need to be really tightened up. Yeah. But I think it's hard to do that right now if the plans are continuing to change, but these are not ready for prime time. Noted. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Mm, Mr. Schumer, anything further before we take questions? Not for me. Mr. Thank Hill. You. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a couple of quick comments. Um, first, on the stormwater bylaw, uh, we, we we strongly recommend that the, that the board not waive this um, because drainage is such an important issue. And I, I know I know the applicant is saying that they they're really only asking for a process waiver and not the substance of it. Uh, but I, I'm a little concerned by the language of the request that suggests that the the project would apply would would comply with all applicable federal and state stormwater requirements. And I, I don't know what that means. And, and unless the applicant is gonna say specifically which requirements they're gonna comply with, um, I, I don't like that kind of language. I think we better just not to waive this at all uh, and, and have the bylaw apply to the project. Um, yeah, yeah, fair point. Uh, I mean, one of, the, one of the points we were reinforcing in our comments is, first of all, we'd like Mr. Zawinski to make this available to Mr. Berkeley so that he can understand it and we'd like to hear from him on it. And I'd like to hear from the peer review on the extent of it. So it's not just the application, but it's the application as it relates to the stormwater bylaw. Fair point. Uh, um, and and I, I, I don't, don't know I'm, that there's an objection on that. And I'm not Is even there? sure that the board can even waive this bylaw where the bylaw itself is a requirement of the, of the town's federal Clean Water Act permit uh, under NIPTES. So I, I don't even think, I mean, I don't, I'm not aware of any precedent on this, but I, I would argue that that this is actually not something that, that, that any town could even waive as long as a bylaw is adopted pursuant to a NIPTES permit uh, for the MS4 program. But that, again, that, that could be a moot point. Um, and my, my only other comment, Mr. Chair, was th there was some discussion tonight about maybe the zoning board deferring judgment on a few issues such as the signs uh, and maybe the applicant could come back and, and propose a sign later for the board's review and approval. Um, and I know, I know that the comment you made, Mr. Chairman, was that you don't, you don't really like that idea. And, and I, I wanted to echo that as well and, and, and also point out that that kind of post-permit review and approval process is actually contrary to uh, established law under both 40B and, and Chapter 40A. Uh, zoning boards, as you may know, cannot defer judgment on on issues and, and, and delegate to other boards uh, for decisions made that are outside the public hearing process. Uh, and that's particularly true with chapter 40B where towns uh, have attempted in the past to delegate to other town boards, the review of other elements of a project post permit and developers have actually challenged that to the housing appeals committee and prevailed. So that's not something that we would recommend uh, to, the, to, the, to any board to do. It doesn't sound like you're, you're in favor of it anyway, but um, I, I just want to remind the board that that's, that's actually contrary to the law. And, and any, any important decision having to do with any, any element of this project really just should be made at, at this hearing. There's, there's no reason not to, to have it fully vetted uh, during the public hearing. Yeah, philosophically, I mean, we're definitely aligned on that. So as I, I, mean, I'm, I, think, I think we've established for the record that the board does want to see um, that element of the design. And I, I know the town weighed in on the importance of at least some of those signs with, with respect to the, the base design. So I expect we'll see more from the applicant on that. It's a good point, Mr. Hill. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Sutton, is there anybody else who'd like to be heard from the board, by the board, uh, before we recess the hearing for the evening? Um, no one by the board. We do have a Deb Kelly as an attendee who has her hand up. Okay. Ms. Kelly, welcome to the board. Ms. Kelly, you're on mute. I best to unmute. Okay. I guess I didn't have my hand raised, but I did uh, have just a general question. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, I mean, is this, and I'm not familiar with all this kind of process, is this an un, um, a huge amount of waiver requests normal to um, a project of this size? That's, you know. <laughs> um, well, I've, I've done this once before. We had a big waiver request on the the one that I sat on a few years back. Um, I'm not sure normal is the standard. I don't know that anything in 40B is normal, but we've got we've got the benefit of some people who do this for a living. So perhaps um, perhaps Ms. Barrett could uh, uh, first uh, take a take a stab at that, and then we hear from Mr. Schulmer. And looks like Mr. Hill would also like to weigh in. 
Yeah, I mean, my experience is this this looks like a fairly typical waiver list. I mean, clearly the less relief a project needs, then the the more abbreviated the waiver list would be. Um, but for a project that needs this much relief in order to be built, you know, it's it's pretty standard. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just telling you I'm not surprised. Thank you. Mr. Schilmer, anything to add to that? No, I, I agree. I agree with that. Um, it, it really depends on the community. Some communities have, have a lot more in the way of, of local regulations, so, such as local wetland bylaws and things like that. And it, the answer would differ based on what's on the site. If there is wetlands that would be subject to local regulation, which here there, there isn't, or a slope protection bylaw or things of that nature. In terms of the dimensional waivers, we are only requesting uh, two, mm -hmm. so a uh, three, uh, including height, I suppose. Um, so I would, I think it's somewhat typical. I've seen more, I've seen less. Thank well, you. But these aren't small dimensional waiver requests. I mean, let's just be honest. When it's you're going from a district, right. for a lot is allowed. That's a pretty significant waiver. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Miss Kelly. The only other thing I'll say is, you know, I, I I think the I think we shouldn't assume that anything's standard. You know, this really is a custom made, uh, you know, really de novo kind of hearing. So I mean, it's good. It's a good question, and I I'm a big fan of of um, understanding things in their relative sense. So I appreciate the comment. I just think it's hard to answer and get a handle on it. You know, I also think that certain provisions of the bylaw are less important than others. And so we shouldn't be counting them. But so for example, the height is, there's a lot of, it's a, it's a, it's a tall building and it was acknowledged to be tall, particularly when you look at what the town would typically permit, you know? So, I mean, that's an example. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have a question? There are no other hands. Okay. Um, let me uh, let me say this. So I, I think we've made some good progress. I don't know that we've got any other business for the board tonight. Um, uh, what we'll do is, Mr. Shomer, we'll hear from you next. No, we'll we'll hear from the peer reviewers next week. Is that right? Yes. We'll hear from the peer reviewers next week, and then the following week um, we'll decide whether, depending upon the progress that's been made on the drainage design. We'll decide whether or not to proceed with the town presentations or to put those off and to hear from the drainage. I, I have a preference to hear from the town after that because drainage is so central and I want everybody to have the benefit of hearing from both Mr. Reardon and um, 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 uh, uh, Jim. Uh, so um, I think that we've agreed to do that. So uh, unless there's further business in front of the board, I'd like to recess this hearing uh, until seven o'clock uh, a week from week from today. All in favor? Okay, good night now. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Good night. You're welcome. Bye now.